Hello there, whoever's here, whoever's not here. Hello, hello. <laughs> Let me adjust my camera a bit. Yes, we've still got the leak, but we're working on it. We're working on it. Let's take the camera down a bit and then you won't have to look so much at the leak. <laughs> uh, well, good evening, whoever's here. Um, it's been a beautiful day today, although it's gone, I've gone chilly now. But it's been a beautiful day. I was sitting outside in the back garden, <laughs> in the back stones, because <laughs> we haven't got a garden yet. And it was beautiful, reading my book and everything. It was lovely. Well, I've got five people in, but nobody's saying anything yet. So let's see who's going to be the first one to say hello. <laughs> Come on, don't be shy. Say hello. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Say hello. Speak to me. Marsha. <laughs> Tracy. Yay. Somebody's spoken to me. Yes, I'm doing fine. I was sitting in the back garden, as we say, the back stones. Um, and it was beautifully sunny. I was reading my book. I'm quite enjoying it, actually. It's uh, that one, Murder at Red My Hall. I'm quite enjoying it. You know, it's a whodunit, and so far I haven't guessed, which is quite good considering I'm on page 260 and I haven't guessed who done it yet. So I like books like that, you know, where it keeps you in suspense right until the very end. Yeah. Well, I've now got eight people in, and only two people have said, hello, come on, what's wrong with you all? Stop being so shy, come and say hello. Otherwise, it's just me, Marsha, and Tracy. It's just like the trio, isn't it? <laughs> Sandra, hello. Now, there's four of us in here now. <laughs> there's 14 on the screen, but four people saying, well, three people. Hi, Miguel. Hi, Chrissy. Yes. I don't know why I can't get warm. I really can't get warm. It was gorgeous. It was glorious out there in the sun today. Beautiful. But would you believe my son's had to go to work gritting? So it's obviously not beautifully sunny, hot and wonderful everywhere, is it? So, yeah, I've got my supplies. I've got my snacks. I've got my got me coffee, my Los Angeles mug that came from um, Z. <laughs> Hi, Denisha. I've now got 23 people and one, two, three, four, five, six people have said hello. Come on, where's the other 17 people? <laughs> you all lurking. <laughs> Please do say hello. We don't bite. We're a nice group of people. We're not going to bite your head off if you say hello to us, yeah? <laughs> Hi, old Donna. <laughs> oh, dear. What a day. It's been beautiful. Gorgeous sunshine today. Yeah. It's 84 in South Carolina. No, I can't. Can't say it's that. <laughs> Hi Monica. Yeah, my fringe is getting worse. Hi Ella. Hi Carol. My niece's ankle is getting slightly better, you'd be glad to know. It's now gone from purple to green and it's now at yellow and she's able to walk on it a bit, although it's still sore. She didn't break it, she just had a bad sprain. So Hi, Pauline. Hi, Nathan. Oh, you love my bedroom wallpaper. It's tough. Arian said it's like an acid trip. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ginger. Hi, North East. And then they said North West. God, that's where I was from. North East from first. Hi, Roseanne. You haven't been here for a long time. I'm very well and welcome. Thank goodness you're back. <laughs> Yeah, we went to choose carpet. Um, 
And, you know, what colour I chose for my bedroom. I mean, it wouldn't be me, but I did choose purple. <laughs> oh, dear, Ella. Yeah, I bet he was 16 stone as well as 16 years old. I know I couldn't lift my old buster up. He was weighed a ton. Jill is out with her daughter. Good for Jill. <laughs> That's what we like, out with family. Can't do it much, but we do like it. Yeah, we went choosing the carpets. Can't have them laid yet because we're not ready. But, yeah, we've, we've chosen most of them. Um, purple in my bedroom. Dark blue in the lounge. Grey on the staircase and grey in the hall, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, North East. It's awful when you have to have an animal put to sleep. Uh-huh. What wedding? What are you talking about, Miguel? Keep up with the beat. Who's having a wedding? Nobody's having a wedding. Will somebody tell... Miguel, we're not having a wedding. Yeah, it's sad. My doggy was 40. My had to him put to sleep and it was very, very upsetting. They're like part of the family, aren't they? Yeah. Hi, Chris. Hi, Steve. <laughs> How's the new bum look? Um, progressing slowly, as you can see from the holes in the ceiling and the leak. <laughs> We're getting there, slowly and surely. Yeah, we lost, um, my son lost his dog, the Rottweiler. She had cancer of the liver. Um, my dog, Buster, his legs just went from underneath him and he couldn't stand up. And because he weighed like about as much weight as <laughs> that, I couldn't lift him. He couldn't move. He just lay there. He was just wetting himself. He couldn't move. So sadly, I had to make that decision. As you know, North East, it's an awful decision to have to make. Yeah. <laughs> Malik, we think we've found where it's coming from. Shade of purple, deep purple like this. This looks blue on camera, but it's not. It's deep purple. Yeah. Yeah, it is expensive, sadly, because it it's more expensive if you want the ashes back. I mean, I had him put to sleep at home, so that cost me far more money, but I didn't want to have the trauma of taking him to the vets and him knowing where he was going, yeah. And then it cost me even more to have his ashes brought back to me. Yes, Sandra, Miguel's confused already. He's already talking about a wedding and I don't know where he gets that from because nobody mentioned a wedding. Hi, Eason. <laughs> Miguel, why are you talking about a wedding? Yeah. Well, my, my buster died um, four years ago, four years ago. And it cost me about £600 with the ashes, yeah. About £300 I didn't put to sleep because it was in the, the house. And about another three for his ashes. And I still haven't got a box for him. Although we are talking about putting his ashes in the garden here because this will be my last house. I didn't want to put him in my outside, I don't know why. I must have had an inkling I wasn't going to stay. Um... So we're going to put him in the garden here. Oh, I'm getting all emotional now. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it. I still can get emotional. It's four years ago. <laughs> look at me, I'm crying now. Look, 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 glassy eyes. Oh, I hate it when you have to put animals to sleep. It's the worst. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. It's like a, a member of your family going here. The stairs and the wedding. No, 
We were talking about carpet, Miguel. Yeah. It will have broke your heart. It broke mine. It's gone those four years later. Hi, Lashira. Yeah, it's the most awful thing, I think, apart from, you know, having to bury your parents, but, yeah. Well, we'll have to face that with Poppy. I mean, Poppy's not getting any younger and she's got terrible arthritis, but, yeah. Oh, she's got her dogs back. Oh, that's great. Polly made them too hot to handle, yeah. She said... Big thing in it, dog napping. That's awful. I hope she didn't have to pay any money to get her dogs back. I hope she just got them back, yeah. Yeah, I can feel your pain. I feel your pain about the dog, yeah. We have to um, do what's best for them, unfortunately. Yeah. I hope she got them back without having to pay the fact, their money to get them back because that would have meant that somebody gained by stealing her dogs. And nobody should gain by stealing a dog. They should get time. And the people who have these dog farms and dog factories, they should do time as well. Keeping dogs in awful conditions just to breed and sell their pups for X number of pounds. Well, hello, Granny D. Squirrel Ray. Ooh. Yeah, Ella, it's terrible. Buster wasn't deaf, but her legs his legs just went from underneath him and he couldn't get up off the off the ground. He just couldn't. I tried and tried lifting him, but he couldn't, yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're on a hot, a really sad subject, aren't we? Can we can we sorry about this? Northeast fun first, but can we please change the subject? I'm just getting emotional up here. And it's not our usual Saturday night, is it? We're all getting emotional. Yeah. Don't think I'm not being sympathetic, but it's just affecting me. So <laughs> and I'm the one who's supposed to be holding it all together. So, oh dear. Let's talk about Lady Gaga getting their dogs back. It's something pleasant. Yeah. The weather has been absolutely gorgeous today. But the trouble is, once the sun drops down, I start getting really cold. I've always been like that. Even when we used to go abroad for holidays, my ex-husband used to laugh at me because as soon as the sun went down, I had to put my cap on. I mean, look at me now, I've got my fleece on. It's just so cold. And I've even got a fleece over my knees at the midi because I'm cold. Yeah. Oh, you see, somebody made them too hot to handle, didn't they, Nathan? Thank goodness. Instantly recognised, yeah. Didn't I finish the sweater? I finished the grey one. But I'm doing um, a bright coloured one at the minute. Like a rainbow is what I'm doing at the moment. Um, I'm doing... That's the front. Hmm. That's the front. Hmm. It's just plain. That's the other front, which is upside down. <laughs> and I'm doing, I've just started the sleeves. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I'm glad because that woman probably needs it far more than the people who tried to pinch the dogs. But she's so glad to get them all back, back again. Yeah, it's um, it's lovely yarn. It doesn't wash very well, though, I have to say this. In case you're thinking of buying it, it fluffs up like mad. Well, it does when I wash it anyway. It's um, Signet Boho. Signet Boho. And the colour is Festival. Um, and I've paid... £3.25 a ball for it. Can't remember where I got it from. Had it a while, yeah. But um, I was going to make a shawl with it, but to be quite honest, with not 
making things for the shop anymore. I, I didn't want one more show, you know. I thought I've got more use for a cardigan. Yeah. Not long now till I get my stuff back. <laughs> what date are we now? 27th. Let me just look at the calendar and it'll come up. Wow. Yep, it's coming up. It's going to be another, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Another nine days and get me shed. <laughs> yeah, another nine days. <laughs> I'm just so excited. <laughs> I hope my dog walkers are all right, Nathan, you know. Poor bloke was only doing his job, wasn't he? And he gets shot. I don't know. You're doing one of Claire's patterns, Bob Wilson, one, two, three. She's very good. Her patterns are good, aren't they? Yeah. Hi, Kaz. Kaz. Was it Kaz Raz? <laughs> Hi, Kaz Raz. Sorry about that. Didn't get your name quite right then. Yeah, I've just started to sleep now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hi, Trish. <laughs> Sorry, I missed you coming in. Oh, Kaz is fine, right? Okay, Kaz. <laughs> We had another young lady that joined, actually, and she said she was a bit shy about joining us. I'm just trying to remember her name. Um, she posted on Facebook and said that she was, you know, lurking or she was listening to us, but she didn't join in. So I can't remember her name to say, welcome, if she comes. <laughs> yeah. Nobody needs to be shy. I'm here. We're all friends. Well, apart from when we get the trolls, yeah. You joined the group from Facebook. That was you, was it? Well, hi, Kaz. You're more than welcome. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, everybody's welcome in here. Well, except the trolls, of course. But everybody else is welcome. Everybody else is welcome. Yeah, I had a lovely long chat with my niece today on the phone. She's really looking forward to being able to come and see us. But with the lockdown, um, it's going to be April. But in a way, it'll be nice if she comes in April because we'll be a lot more straight. Yeah. Oh, well, you're more than welcome, Kaz, because we're all quite friendly in here. Well, most of us. Miguel is often confused, but most of us are friendly. <laughs> Welcome, Sandra. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Maribel. Yeah. Oh, we have. We have. It's not um, Saturday night unless Miguel's confused, and he's already been confused because he thought I said a wedding, and I didn't. I was talking about my hall carpet, so I don't quite know where he heard wedding from. Mikhail, can you get your ears x-rayed while you're at the hospital? <laughs> I think he needs a scan. <laughs> oh, Miguel is very welcoming, yes. He is very welcoming. Very confusing at times, but he's, uh, he's very welcoming. Yeah. Oh, thanks, Trish. My hair is becoming a problem. <laughs> I've got a lockdown hair. <laughs> it's getting worse. I need my niece to come with her scissors. Not that she's a hairdresser, but she trims the ends for me. But, um, yeah, Miguel is who knows. The one who gets confused, that's Miguel. Yeah. Yeah. I've got. A nose that's running. Well, everybody's got a nose, haven't they? But mine's running. Yeah. 
Yes, uh, I would be, I'd love to see my niece. It's terrible when you can't see people, isn't it? I'm on early tonight. No, it's 22 minutes past nine here, yeah. And I need a tissue for the nose, it's running, yeah. Oh, don't be shy with us. It's only yours. You're always confused, Miguel. Just explaining to Kaz that you're always confused. <laughs> yeah, oh, Miguel has a spanner. He's on high alert for the trolls, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm really missing my niece. I mean, she does phone me every week, but I'm really missing her, yeah. Somebody's just sent me a message. It's probably been my friend June. She just said she's had a right day at work, but I couldn't answer it because I was coming straight on here. Um. <laughs> yeah, I'm just looking forward. I'm looking forward to my shed coming because that will occupy me for at least a week or even longer. I have no idea what is in my bags that are in storage. So it'll be like going wool shopping all over again, or yarn shopping, should I say? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> TikTok clock ears. No, that's um, Shad has got the clock ears. And Chris sometimes, yeah. Yeah. I have found the clock, but I haven't brought it in. Because the battery actually is run down, which, you know, shadow be absolutely overjoyed to know. <laughs> Hi, Susan. <laughs> I'm going to bring that the, the actual clock in just to show, you know, Shad that I've got it. Because I know he hates it. <laughs> when I'm buying a new clock for it here, I'll have to say, can I have one that doesn't tick? Because uh, Mika, um, Chad can't stand the ticking. I don't know whether all clocks tick, do they? All clocks tick. Every clock I've had's ticked. Oh, yeah. Kelly, yeah, we've got a, a riddle, apparently. I told my niece about it. She was quite thrilled, yeah. That she's... Um, you know, got a, a cheaper place for her to shop instead of having to keep shopping at Asda. Yeah. So hopefully she'll be able to cut her, her food bill down a little bit, which is, um, yeah, I like a clock ticking, but apparently others on here don't, because uh, they call me out because they can hear me clock tick, tick, tick. And I can't even hear the damn thing. Yeah, so hopefully Kelly will be able to save a few pennies on her food shopping, which will be really handy. Because as you all know, nobody's money goes up, do they? But the food keeps going up and the bills keep going up. But yeah, you know, pennies don't go up, do they? Oh, unless it's a bomb, yeah, we don't want that. I can't hear it. I think I've gone deaf to it, Chris. I only hear it when somebody points it out to me and I stand and I listen. But I don't know whether all clocks tick, because I'm going to be buying a new clock for in here when I get, you know, around to it. But I mean, things like pictures and trimmings and stuff like that. I brought the stag with me, but I don't know where it's going to go, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, most places will be re restocked now, the electric is back on again, and most people have got their water. I'm sure all the shops will get restocked again very soon, Miguel. You don't have to worry. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I watched Kelly's video. She's put two out recently, I think. She did put one out about her crocheting and 
you would be in trouble, Miguel, if your heart wasn't ticking. <laughs> yeah, if you refresh Sandra, it usually comes back to normal again. It happens with Miguel a lot that that the um, the words lagging behind with the. Oh, your daughter works in the supermarket. That's handy, isn't it? <laughs> At least you won't go short of anything. Yeah. I used to work at Asda, Asda Walmart as they are. Only as a part-time, I had another job as well. But at the time, I needed central heating and I didn't have the funds and I didn't want to go into debt um, to get a boiler and radiators. So I um, took a, another job. Nearly killed me. I was working full time, uh, 40 hours a week, and I was also working uh, how many hours did I work? Four, eight, yeah, 16 hours a week I worked at Asda as well. And it was like after after my work during the day. I'd come home at five o'clock and then at six o'clock I had to sign on at to Asda and I worked there till 10 at night. It was hard work. When it finished up, it did my back in in the end, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I bet you're a lovely mum, aren't you, Kaz? Please, can you get me some beans? No, I mean peas. Oh, and I forgot my bread. <laughs> my sister-in-law still down in Devon. Yeah, I'm here. I'm, no, I'm not way behind. You're way behind. Cas, welcome to Miguel. <laughs> yeah, this one was a present from Z, Zelda LRJ3. Yeah. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to get a, a parcel from her when she was working and she had cash. Sadly, now, I mean, she's out, uh, she's had to invalid out. So her, her money isn't as. What's it as it used to be? Yeah. Yeah. So I have I don't send passes anymore, especially not to America. It's so expensive. The postage. You're killing it. Yeah, I have I missed a lot of Z's. She did the Valentine Day ones, didn't she? And I haven't watched them. I haven't watched anybody's, to be quite truthful. I've watched one of Lester's, and I watched that's uh, I'm a Survivor uh, with his donkeys and stuff. And I watched one with the Chihuahuas. And I watched Kelly. But apart from that, I have been awful about watching anybody's videos, yeah. Yes, I spoke to Sue earlier this week. Yeah. She was having a ramp delivered for her garage, yeah. Yeah, American yarn, you can get it on. Is it Wool Warehouse or is it Derimore's? Somebody has it um, for sale in the UK. It is a lot more expensive than it is uh, for the UK. I mean, our red heart over here, you can pay £7 for a ball. And I mean, over there... In the US, they go crazy. They pay about four, four dollars for a ball of red art. <laughs> and we're paying seven pound, which is about ten dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I'm missing Sue. I'll be glad when this lockdown's over, when she can come down and visit. Yeah. Hi, Patricia. Welcome. Come and say hello. Oh, 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 my foot. I get shooting nerve pains in my foot sometimes and they really jack at me. Stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. I think it's a side effect of my diabetes. Yeah. Oh, hi, Patricia. Oh, I need to sit back here. 
need to sit back and stop my foot from going jag, jag, jag. Oh, diabetes is fun. It's really fun. Yeah, you get all these shooty pains. I had them up my arm the other day. And I always have to wear gloves because I get like electric shocks. <laughs> if anybody else is diabetic, do they get the same? I get like electric shocks up my hand. It's all nerves, isn't it? Nerve endings, yeah. It's fun. I need to order a prescription. It's so awkward here. This this new uh, place I'm at, they only accept um, prescription orders between 10 o'clock and 12 o'clock in Monday to Friday. And I keep forgetting to order my prescriptions. When you order them, it'll take about another four days before they arrive. Have I finished my knitting? For the moment, I haven't finished completely. I've still got some baby things to knit. But I had a break from it. I thought I'd knitted myself a bit. My soul, soldiers, my shoulders started hurting. So I gave my knitting up for a bit. Anyway, my friend hasn't got a foster baby at the moment. So it's not urgent, anything, yeah. Yeah, I, I can get them delivered. It takes about four days after you've ordered them. They're not exactly Speedy Gonzales around here, yeah. My sugars, oh. I know why. It's because I've run out of my injections, so I didn't have any of them. I only have one a week. It's not like it's a, uh, insulin or anything. I've run out of them, so I can't inject myself tomorrow because I haven't got any. Um... And I've not been taking my me, uh, me metformin like I should be. I should be taking it one in the morning and I've not been taking them. I think I'm a rebel. I just don't want to be ill. Well, it's not ill, is it? Diabetes, it's not ill. But you know what I mean? I rebel against taking pills. I think, no, nah, I'm not taking them. Waste of time, not taking them. <laughs> And then, uh, then my blood sugars go off the rails and I think, Cheryl, fault because you should be taking your medication. Yeah. You get the pains in your back? Oh, don't talk to me about my back. We're not talking about backs today. I was sitting on a chair outside that wasn't particularly comfortable reading a book. So any back pain I've got is entirely my fault. I should get myself cosy, cushion at the back, should get, yeah. Yeah, I should try harder to get my sugar down. But what have I got? I've got two two biscuits, a chocolate, and two packets of sweeties, yeah. Now I'm going to show you something that's going to make you laugh. These are snack packs that we give to our kids. Yeah. I bet you've not got anything that small, have you, in the US? Yeah. <laughs> Everything you have is like a bucket full, but that is a snack pack for a child in the UK. <laughs> Still got too many calories in for me, but it is a good size. It's just big enough for a child, but. I bet you don't have them that small, do you, in America? I bet you don't. Yeah. I like that's the size of a snack bar for a, for a child as well. That's the size. And that's the size of a bag of crisps. And when you think about it, half of that is there. Yeah. Oh gosh, Ruth, I get pains everywhere. I think it's get, I'm getting old. I need to start to exercise my muscles in my back. My problem is I've got no core strength, as they call it. Um, when your spine is absolutely knackered like mine is, um, the only way you can do it is to do core strength, which is to strengthen the muscles in your back so that they take the pain away from your spine. 
but I haven't done any exercises and I haven't done anything for a long, long time. So again, it's again, it's my own fault. I should be practicing. I should be doing exercises at least while sitting in a chair. I know I can't jump up and down and do star jumps or anything, but I could do something. It's my own fault for being so lazy. When I moved here, I said, right, I'm going to start learning how to walk again. Um, when I say walk again, I mean walk in the street again, because I'm very uneven now, mm -hmm. all over the place. Um, so I'm going to start learning how to walk again, even if I need a walk. Yeah. I'm going to stop being vain and start using a walker. You know, you, you sort of think, oh, God, I'm not that old. I don't want to. What's that? What is that? Oh, it's the end of my fringe. <laughs> I thought I'd discovered something lurking underneath my foot. It was the fringe off me. Off me shawl. Yeah, cross room fly exercise. I should start to do more but it really hurts when I walk more than a few no no more mice Miguel no more mice really hurts me when I start to walk I mean when I went to choose the carpets today uh, uh, yesterday the guy in the shop said I'll get a chair I'll get a chair for you <laughs> he must have thought oh my god this poor woman she looks in pain I was like leaning against the carpets my face must have told it all. He went, I'll get your chair, I'll get your chair off. So he kept saying, be careful because this chair moves, it's on casters. Let me hold it while you sit down. <laughs> Otherwise you might go scooting off. I do need a new computer chair. But I was looking at them online, aren't they expensive? They're really posh ones. The ones that are so comfy and cosy are all gaming chairs. And my son said, you can't get one of those because they're too low. They're down on the ground near enough, you know. So, oh, they're really expensive. I mean, they do look comfy. How come it's comfy to have a gaming chair and it's not comfy to have a PC chair? Perhaps it's because whoever does gaming spends forever, ever, ever, ever in a day in, in one. That's probably why, isn't it? The lazy little blighters never get out of the chair, do they? <laughs> oh dear. I don't know why gamers sit on the floor. But apparently the gamers' chairs are very, very down. Because I really said, I said, oh, that looks comfy, that chair. He said, you can't have that one, Mum. I'm in money browsing at the moment. I'm not ordering. And uh, he said, you can't have that, Mum. I said, why not? He said, it's too low. So, yeah, well, why do gamers sit on the floor? Perhaps, I don't know. So they get overexcited and they might fall off a chair. Yeah, a lot of the gaming chairs are like that, aren't they? I'd, I'd look good once I like trying to do my videos like that while I was away back in a chair. <laughs> this one's straight up, but I've had it a long time and the seat bit's gone a bit flat. You know, it's because I'm so slender, isn't it? And so lightweight, like a little twig. I wish. <laughs> yeah, I deny everything. I really do. I deny I've got anything wrong. But then I start to walk and then, yeah, you have to admit it, don't you? Sorry, mate, can't walk. <sighs> Yeah, but never mind. I've got my wheeler. I've got a little wheeler thing with three wheels. Yeah. That I'm going to try and walk with. If I only get to the end of the street and back, it'll be nice, won't it? 
but my back just goes cramped when I walk. Oh God, I'm beginning to sound like that other YouTuber that talks about her ailments all the time. Stop it. Stop it. Let's talk about something else. Mm. Right, what's everybody crocheting? We'll have a change. <laughs> change of subject. What you're all crocheting. <laughs> or knitting or whatever you're doing. It could be embroidering for all I know. You could be doing them dotty 5D things. <laughs> yeah, I need an office chair who's but comfy. Yeah, a comfy office chair. The thing is with lockdown is you can't exactly go to the shop and sit in them, can you? When you're ordering things online, it's like it and this, isn't it? You know, you think if I'd have gone in the shop, I wouldn't have bought that because it's not comfy. Yeah. You're making a ro oh a Ross hat. Somebody else was making a Ross hat, or was it you, but Ginger making a Ross hat? You're drinking iced coffee. Um, you're crushing a vest, Ella. Yeah. Yeah, my mum worked herself to death. She had everything known to man. My mum, she was a really hard worker. When I was younger, people used to say, oh my God, you never stop. And I say, look, I'm nothing compared with my mother. My mother was a complete and utter live wire. I don't know where she got her energy from. My mum never stopped. It's no wonder she was like she was. She wore herself out, my mother. Yeah. You're knitting a scarf in rib stitch. Oh, I found a, I actually found a, a washcloth. Now, why on earth would I want to do a washcloth in dark grey? I presume it was because I had a ball of dark grey cotton. I mean, it's not exactly throwing, is it, to put in my bathroom? <laughs> Never mind. Might as well finish it because I started it. Yeah. We are knitting a blanket in cotton. Oh, 3.5 needles, Sandra. Hmm. Did somebody give Sandra a medal? <laughs> Anything at Aaron Jumper? Your crocheting hearts, Tracy, yeah. You need to cook, but you don't want to. Well, if you want to eat, Miguel, you need to cook. It's two choices, isn't it, mate, yeah? Eh? Two choices. If you don't cook, you won't be able to eat, Miguel. Did you get your car fixed, by the way, Miguel? Did you get it mended? Miguel went and skidded into a ditch when it was ice. And when they were hauling him out, they damaged a bit of his car. Yeah. <laughs> You're making grilled ham and cheese? That sounds lovely. We don't have a sandwich maker here anymore. I, I, I like sandwiches. You know, toasty sandwiches. Nothing nicer, is that? I might suggest we get a toasty sandwich maker when we get the kitchen done. Yeah, I like toasted sandwiches. But my sandwich maker was a big, bit icky. No, I had one of those electric ones, you know, where you just put the sandwich in and shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds a bit uh, Heath Robinson, let me go. I'm sure you get it fixed eventually. You can't go around pieces of coat hanging on your car. <laughs> They'll be saying, here goes the hillybillies. <laughs> I had a coat hanger once for a car aerial. Yeah. I used to use mine a lot, Kaz, my sandwich maker. I love cheese and ham toasties or cheese and onion toasties. They're lovely. But you have to make sure your onions are chopped really small or they're partly cooked. Yeah. Hello, Tommy. 
Yeah, I had a Breville toaster, yeah, but it went a bit icky because I've had it about 10 years. So when I was moving here, my son said, we are not taking that with us. Yeah. You're knitting hearts for your grandchildren, yeah. Oh, the coat hangers are okay. <laughs> no, my coat hanger was an aerial for the car. So it was like stuck on top of the car for all the world to see. Yeah. Toasted tomato sandwich. I got some of those bags one time where you're supposed to be able to put ordinary sandwiches in your toaster, but it, um, I don't know, they never really worked properly. No. Yeah, yeah, that was the toast toast bags. I didn't find that they worked in my toaster. I don't know why. See, you're talking about food, and now I'm hungry. I'm going to eat with snacks already. I didn't even notice that, Cass. <laughs> I love salads in the um, summer. But I mean a real salad. I'm not just talking about a bit of lettuce and a tomato. I'm talking about a proper... A proper salad, you know, with about 94 things in it. <laughs> You know, like a rice salad or whatever. Not, um, You know, the old British salad used to be lettuce leaves, tomatoes, bit of ham. You know, that was about it. In the old days, that was, people would say, oh, I can't stand salad. I like those salad bars that they used to have in restaurants. They don't have them anymore now because there are people coughing all over them and stuff. But you know, where you could go and choose what you wanted off a salad bar. It was great. I could live on eggs, yeah. I like sardines as well on toast. Sardines on toast and then put back under the under the flame like yeah to, to sort of warm the warm the sardines a bit. I never tried sardines in the, in the Breville toaster. I should have done, but I like, I like sardines. Sardines and tomatoes, because tomato takes the edge off that sardine. Yeah, boiled ham. God knows what's in the boiled ham we get these days. It's all water in it. even taken to oysters. I'm not a shellfish person. I like um, prawns. I like ordinary fish. But I don't like, I'm, I'm not keen on oysters or clams or anything like that. I'd rather have sardines than pilchards, I don't ask me why, what the difference is. But. Hi Deborah. I used to like ham when you got it from the, 
delicatessen and they used to put the ham on the slicer, you know, and slice it for you. It looked like proper ham, didn't it? didn't look like all that stuff they sell in the supermarket that's all prefabricated or whatever. I like tongue. I like it, it lots of tongue. Mm. At the moment, the subject is food, yeah. I love spam, especially fried. Oh, gorgeous. We've seen the adverts. If you're, in, if you're in the UK, we've seen all the adverts for spam at the moment on the telly. I get some new superfood. We were all brought up on spam. During the war, after the war, I was, you know. Spam and corned beef was about the only thing. So. I love corned beef hash. Absolutely love. Hi, Sherry. I don't like spam so much. Raw, you know what I mean? Just out the tin. I like it fried like for breakfast and stuff. Spam chips and eggs. Nice quick tea. I have eaten tripe when I was young. And I have eaten black pudding, but that's not my favourite. But brown, no. No, not keen on brown. No, somebody sent me a message. Was it you, Sherry? I've never been in America at all. I, I, I don't know where you got that from, Sherry. I've never been to America. Yeah, corned beef sandwich with onion or pickles with that awful. No, somebody sent me a message saying that they thought I'd been to Florida. I didn't answer because I haven't been. You must be mixing me up with somebody else, Sherry. It must be. I didn't know I had a spam account because I've definitely never been to America. We've seen Lester's latest um, video. He's got another uh, rooster. So one rooster has got three hens, but the other one that's tiny, you know, he's too tiny to look after his ladies, let's just say. He's still got his three ladies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny because a spam account when we're talking about spam. We've got a free week next week. There's no workman coming next week. As far as I know. <laughs> I get um, memos about... Uh, 
Oh, you couldn't find the videos of the chihuahuas. Oh. That's so lovely as well. I thought that Chris gave you the link to that, Kaz. What's my favourite food? Um, in the past, I would have said steak. But not anymore, because I don't have the teeth for steak anymore. <laughs> um, some kind of fish, I presume. I like fish. Hi, Magali. Chris, can you post the um, the link for the, the Chihuahua man again? I hate mac and cheese. Guess what I had for my tea today? Pasta. They are uh, cars. There's the Chihuahua link. I hate mac and cheese. I hate pasta. And I had pasta again for my tea. They love pasta in this house and I don't. Pasta is not my thing at all. Yep. Got me gloves on. I got some new pairs, except for two new pairs. You got four more, haven't you? Four more chihuahuas. That I've been passed about. Boys have integrated in with all the little ones so far, but the, the girls haven't yet. They're still a bit, uh, oh, he got a bit nervous. Thank you, Dinas. No, I don't think so, Kaz. I don't like pasta. I'll eat it, but it is not something I would say, oh, I want pasta. How am I doing today? I'm doing very well, actually. It was lovely and sunny today, so I was out in the back stones. <laughs> How many does he have? He has about 30 or 40, two hours at the minute, yeah. Yeah. I love little chihuahuas, but our Marine doesn't. He calls them little rats. I think it's probably because of Gigi, because Gigi hated him. <laughs> he used to try and bite his legs every time he came in the house. <laughs> I miss having a cuddle. I mean, I can cuddle Poppy to a certain extent and stroke her and tickle her tummy. It's not the same as picking one up and giving it a cuddle. I used to love having my little naps with Gigi. You know, he used to, she used to call it, she, he used to come and curl upon my lap. And we used to have a a nana nap, as my Ian calls it, when you have a nap in the afternoon, a nana nap. When I nod off, he'll say, you have a nana nap. nap. I'm drinking coffee, black coffee. Poppy is sleeping in the little space between my would-be bedroom and the bathroom at the moment. She must be too warm because that's where she likes to sleep. She was outside with me most of the day. Oh, gosh. I've got a little bit left of, of a zero sugar cola. It's not actual cola, it's 
comes from Aldi, I think, or Lidl. They love pasta. I'd rather have rice. Yeah, I miss it and Gigi, I really do. They will bring him to see me in the summer. So. But of course, nobody can come. I was Shira. I said, G to BB. Hello, BB. Yeah, I really miss Gigi. I miss my little cuddle bunny. Well, I looked after him every day when he think for about six years. So I'm bound to miss him. Well, not every day, every week you day, I missed him, yeah. The team puppets, oh gosh, that reminds me of, of um, when my son was small, I used to knit him puppets, yeah. GG, oh gosh, he could snore. He was only, what, about seven pound? If he was that, about five pound he weighed. And he, uh, oh, he could snore like nobody's business. All right, Sandra, we'll see you next week. Yeah, I really, really miss my GG. <laughs> Cross for a dog, yeah. No, sadly, I mean, I can't really walk a dog, so it wouldn't be right of me to get one when I can't take it and look after it properly. Yeah. Much as I would love a little dog. It isn't fair when you can't look after them. I might have would have had one when I was, like, at Mount Side. But my niece went past the old house today, but she couldn't look in because they had the curtains drawn. <laughs> she wanted to have a nosy. But the curtains were drawn upstairs and down. Still my old curtains, I don't know what they're doing. But I did have two lounges, so, you know, they could be living in the back, couldn't they? That's why there's nothing in the front, yeah. Oh, God, he always used, oh, yes. I mean, Poppy, oh, she makes my eyes water. But Buster. Sue used to always complain that he was always had his bottom towards her when he used to trump. Or fart or whatever you want to call it. We call it Trump over here. This is why I don't want to get in politics here, but why we found Trump so amusing is we call a fart a Trump for here. <laughs> so anybody actually call that was funny, yeah. Because <laughs> I grew up using that word. <laughs> oh dear me. We're not doing politics, so don't carry on. <laughs> the only thing that tickles me about American politics, and I'm not talking about anybody in particular, why are your politicians so old? Why have they all got one foot in the grave, you know? Can you not pick anybody that's reasonably aged, yeah? No, I've not had a look at my sofa yet. Yeah. I meant to do it today, but I didn't because, you know, things happened and I didn't. I've actually had a, 
an email from the people that posted it off to me asking had I received it all. But I mean, I don't want to say, yeah, it's wonderful, it's lovely and fantastic and it's got a leg missing or something. So I really need to have a look at it. <laughs> yeah, you play Trump's with cards, don't you know Trump is or something? <laughs> I can remember my mother, I'm useless at cards. I cannot play cards at all. They teach me a card game and I'll play it that night. Yeah, Harold Wilson, but he wasn't 77, was he? I can't remember. But I'm sure he wasn't 77 when he first came into power. He might have been 77 when he left, but he wasn't when he was. <laughs> I mean, we had Winston Churchill as well, don't forget. He was quite elderly. But he wasn't when he was first elected. Yeah, you need limits for the age group, I think, for politicians. I don't think anybody over the age of 60 or 65 should be in politics. They're all too old and naked. Yeah, I can't play cards at all. Cribbage, I never got the hang of cribbage either. Is that where you have them little matchsticks and you move them up and down? Is that cribbage? Hello, who wanted to know where Poppy was? Who wants to know where she was? Here she is. Hello, darling. Why is it the minute I put the camera on her, she disappears? Can you hear her? I'm sorry you're all looking at her bottom, but that's the way she's facing. <laughs> Poppy, what are you doing? Yeah, but the time they get to be president, Miguel, they're old. I'm ancient. Yeah. <laughs> the only game I play now is solitaire. That's the only thing I can play. And I play that on the computer. Puppy, can you learn to shut a door, please? Mm, can you can we shut the door, darling? You're letting all the heat out. Mm? You're letting all the heat out. Yes, you are. No. I'm not, let, no, I'm not letting you out. If you want to call, yes, I'm mammy. She's mammy. Just watch. By the time I come back over here, she'll come back in again and push the door on. I know what she wants. She wants to go out for a wee. But I'm not going to take her out for a wee because it takes her forever and she won't come back in. So, no. My unit, which one? No, it's sort of perched. <laughs> it's not got anything in it. That's my TV. Those boxes at the back is my new TV stand because my TV, well, you can't see it, but my TV's on a glass stand at the moment. There's the doors. There's my orange flowers, well, yellow flowers. And the, my poor plants seem to be dying. And the other units I've got are uh, at the back there. No, they're just in here. They're not put together. We just found the drawers for that, so it looks more put together. But there's nothing in it. <laughs> nothing in it. I don't like politics, no. Yeah, poor old Obama came in looking young. He went out grey, wasn't he? Yeah, it's hikey, yeah, uh, Nathan, yeah. Billies and Calaxes, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's coming through from the upstairs bathroom. The plumber's been about three times and can't find where the leak is. My son thinks he's actually found it now. It's a minute leak, but it's just seeping through, yeah. So we can't have, I've got to have the ceiling re-plastered, but I can't have it done until we find out where the leak's coming from. I mean, the poor plumber lives across the road. <laughs> he must be sick of us keep going. It's, you know, Matt, it's, at least it's not, it's not dripping. It started off dripping, but it's not dripping anymore now. It's just seeping. 
You want me for president? Yeah, don't know anything about American politics and I don't want to. <laughs> it seems a right rat race to me. I thought our politics were bad enough, yeah. Well, we've got holes in it, as you can see, we've got three big holes cut in it. Uh, my son stuffed that stuff in it because it was blowing a gale down it, yeah. I wouldn't know the first thing about politics. I've never had any interest in it. Um, not in the slightest bit political. Oh, you're sorting out your storage. I'm going to be sorting out mine as well soon. Another eight days. <laughs> Hi, Melly. <laughs> yeah, a week on Monday. My shed's coming. <laughs> I'm going to be so excited. Oh, yeah, it's going to come down altogether, Chris. It's, uh, but I don't want to pull it down yet until I've got the plaster coming in, if you know what I mean. I don't want a great big hole looking at rafters up above. It'll get sorted, don't worry. It's not, um, not going to stay. You could cook a soup. Yes, you could, if you've got any vegetables, yeah. Yeah, we yeah, don't worry about it, Chris. It's not staying. That ceiling is not staying. It's going to be all pulled out and a new piece put in. And then it's all going to be replastered. And then I've got the decorators coming. I think it's the first week in April. All being well with the ceiling's done. <laughs> I could be president and dish out free prescriptions for one. Yeah, I could. I could say it's a, it's, um, yeah, it's detrimental. Into, it's good for your mental health, isn't it? Well, it's proven fact, isn't it? Anything to do with crafting. I'm not saying crochet. I'm not saying knitting. Any kind of crafting, if it's painting or whatever it is, woodworking, it's all good for your mental health. So if anybody's feeling a bit, you know, it's very good for anxiety because it concentrates your brain on something else. Even if you do a jigsaw, you know, you know, a puzzle, whatever they call them in America. We call them jigsaws. Over. I get confused because we also called a saw thing, you know, where you cut wood. One of them is a jigsaw. So we get very confused over here. Yeah. Yeah, I think crafting is what's kept. I think this is why... There's been such an upsurge in crafting, and the while this um, COVID's been, um, yeah. Oh my goodness, I wouldn't even know where to start with a drop spindle. I'd have it all thick and thin; it'd all be textured. <laughs> it'd never be the same thickness. I don't know whether Kelly bought a drop spindle when we went to a. A show one time, yeah. I don't know if she used it or not. <laughs> you can colour it in, anything like that, Gail, it's just as good. I feel sorry for anybody who doesn't craft in some way or another. If all they do is sit still and stare at the TV, that in it alone is totally depressing. Yeah. Well, your kitty's still missing, is she, Miguel? Let's hope that somebody else is taking her in. Yeah, Shad must be camping or fishing or something, yeah. I've never wanted to die, yeah. Um, I know Kelly has. Kelly's done it. And Denise has done it, yeah. Quite a few people have done it. I think Sonny has done it as well. 
Yeah, I can't sit still. I can't. On the odd occasions, I've forgotten my grocery and like and gone to a hospital thinking, oh, I'm not going to be long. <coughs> I'll not take it. And, you know, you get pillar to post, don't you? you get asked to go for an x-ray, you get asked to go here. I go crackers. I do, I go crazy. Have I forgotten anything? I'm sitting there. And how many people sit in a hospital waiting room? You see them and they're not doing anything at all. Yeah, that Crafton and Treats, Catherine, she's done, she did a load of stuff with natural dyes, didn't she, at one time? Using things out of her garden. Um, I know that the Scottish, you know, the, the tweeds and that, the Harris tweeds and the, all those kind of tweeds are all done with natural dyes. They're not done with anything uh, man-made. I haven't watched Catherine for a while. Not because they're all like her, it's just <laughs> I've not been watching anybody for a long time. I've got diabetes, I don't know whether it's type 1 or type 2, I think it's type 2. I hate going for my blood. Stick your arm out. How's that other guy, the one who was ill, who went abroad for treatment? I think he has cancer, doesn't he? How's he doing? Yeah, we won't be good. We our garden will be won't be vegetables, I don't think. I don't think so. Fruity knitting, yeah. I don't really watch them, but I know he's been poorly, haven't he? No, Miguel doesn't have videos. We've all been going on with Tim Cats to make somebody doesn't. Miguel is a mystery man. Nobody knows what he looks like. All I've ever seen is a shoulder with stitches in it. Somebody over here in England from some kind of pop group, he's got a brain tumour, hasn't he? Hello, John. Goodbye, La Shira. Oh dear, cinnamon stitches had an identity hack. That's awful. I don't know why people have to hack people's videos and stuff. They must be sad, sad people. I can't remember who it is. There's somebody from a pop group in Britain got a brain tumour. He's only just had, they've only just had a new baby as well. Hello, Heidi.
Is she ready at the moment, John? I used to watch a lovely young woman I'm talking about years and years ago. I think she was, I don't know where she was from, the Netherlands or somewhere. And she had a stroke and she went, went blind. She was a beautiful crush as well. I can't think of her name. She did make a few videos after went blind but I don't think she's made any sense. But she used to do tutorials and everything. She was a lovely young woman but she was only about in her 20s or early 30s. Might have been. But she had this stroke and it left her partially deaf I think it was and it left her blind. She went all over the place. She did manage to pick up crocheting again, um, even though she'd lost her sight. Yeah, it's a good few years since she had a stroke now. She was so young, I think she was only in her 20s. I can't think of her name. I'm still subscribed to her, I haven't unsubscribed, but she mustn't have made any videos. Well, she's not on YouTube anymore. I know I didn't unsubscribe. <laughs> oh, Lady from Cyprus, that's Lorraine. Lorraine's on Facebook, but she's not made any videos. She had a little girl. She had a boy, then she had a little girl. When she was after she was pregnant, she didn't. Um, um, she didn't make any videos when she was pregnant, and she hasn't made any since. She did some lovely designs for shawls and that. They're all on Ravelry. Lorraine Pugh, she's called. Yeah. Show us how to make. I, I've got a brain like a sieve, baby. <laughs> I can't remember. Mediterranean somewhere. Let me go. Somewhere over near Greece, I think. Yeah, she's on Facebook as Lorraine Pugh. But I don't think she's done any videos since she had a little girl. A little girl's about two now as well. I know her mum used to have a wool shop, didn't she, in Cyprus? But she retired, yeah. Yeah, what happened to Mary from Ireland? Does anybody know? He wants a cabin. We have to get a cabin in the wood near Chris. <laughs> and you can keep each other company. I don't know what happened to Mary. Everybody kept saying, where's Mary? Where's Mary? And I don't know where she went. She just went, didn't she? Didn't say she was going. I 
You and Chris can build a little commune. <laughs> Hi Heidi, are you John's girlfriend? Or am I on the wrong Heidi? <laughs> it would be a coincidence if it was a different Heidi, wouldn't Zoe's still around. She's on um, Facebook. She does a lot of, um, I won't call it gaming. More like, I uh, don't know quite what you would call it. Yeah, welcome, Heidi. Sorry, by the way. Um, what do you call it? It's not gaming. she does conventions she goes to and things like that it's all techie stuff she does now well she hasn't done any crochet videos for a while uh, Zoe she said she was going to start again I mean I'm in contact with her so I talk to her nearly every week No, she doesn't play Facebook games. She plays, it's really hard to explain. It's more like these convention things she goes to. She goes to America a couple of while. Well, she did until the lockdown. She used to go to America a couple of times a year to go to these conventions. Yeah. It's not gaming like you would um, um, think about. It's more intellectual than just gaming. <laughs> she has been on here a couple of times, yeah. Chewing away. Ambigaroom. Do you know I admire anybody who makes ambigaroom with a drive me bonkers? Oh, she's, I mean, I, I presume she's still crocheting. I don't, you know, she just hasn't made any videos lately. I can't do amigurumi, I can't hold, um, you know, the fine crochet hooks that you need because you have to crochet amigurumi very tight because if you don't, all the stuffing pokes out, yeah. And I am absolutely rubbish at faces. Even putting safety eyes in, I get them all in the wrong place. Working on a leopard. Oh, those adverts are do your head in. I have never made a minion hat. I must be the only one in Britain who's never made one. <laughs> oh, bye, Trish. I don't know. What you mean those are like mukbang, whatever that's supposed to be. That is disgusting watching people chew with their mouth open. Ugh. That is the most disgusting thing ever. 
when I was I went about 17, I was really keen on this guy. Really thought he was the bee's knees. We went out together for ages. Until I had to sit opposite him at his mum's while he ate his dinner. That was the most disgusting experience ever. I went right off him. <laughs> I can't stand people who eat with their mouth open. Not clack their food about, oh. Or people who eat, oh, I hate that noise. Oh, you're going, Carol, right? See you next week. That's the one, baby, Catalina Stan. She was a lovely lady. She did beautiful tutorials. And then she had a, a stroke. Mm. No, I don't like people eating like that. People with no table manners, I absolutely hate that. I always think, where were they brought up? Did the mother never tell them not to do that, you know? Elbows on the table. My mother used to go bonkers if you put your elbows on the table. If I find myself like doing that, you know, my mother's voice comes in my head. Take your elbows off the table. That's such bad manners. She told people off because she had a wrench in a chat and was dropping a URL. What's that? They do had good tutorials. I used to watch. Um, Bob Wilson, one, two, three. Then I used to watch that um, other lady, the one who went a bit peculiar. Um, has she not been on for six years? Oh, goodness. It doesn't seem six years since... Uh, that she was on, yeah. That's such a shame. I hope she's not got any worse. You know, I really thought she was coming to. Jill popped on. She did come on, I think. Oh no, she didn't. No, I'm getting mixed up with Granny D. Granny D came on. Miguel said that Jill's with her daughter, so that's why she's not on. No, Granny D popped on. Yeah, there was a woman called Teresa. She used to have absolutely brilliant tu tutorials on that. And then she went completely off a rock. Oh, gosh, no, that's awful. That's rude. The channel name, it's rude, rude, rude. No, boyfriend sweaters are the kiss of death, Miguel. Every time I made something for a boyfriend, we finished. <laughs> I 
I never made anything for my ex-husband until we were engaged. <laughs> my mother kept saying, oh, please don't start another sweater. When I had a boyfriend, please don't say. So in other words, Miguel, that's all she went into the chat for, so she could keep dropping her, her link. But we the pastor that did kosher videos. No, I haven't. Oh, not the same lady that I had the argument with, is it, Miguel? The one who said she was going to be bigger than uh, that lad who crochets, yeah. Did you see somebody pinched his videos and said it was her grandson? Look at my, look at my grandson crossing. Cheeky B. Wasn't my grandson at all. I mean, somebody pulled up about it and said, it's not your grandson at all, take the videos down. It was Jonah. Yeah, she's not made any though, Claire, has she, for a while? That bob with someone too thin. She made a video saying she was going to come back making videos. And then I'm not seeing this until. <laughs> his videos and said this is my grandson isn't he a wonderful crochet pinching Jonah's videos well people do it all the time don't they Somebody pinched my videos once a long time ago. Oh, is that what she's doing, Sandra? Yeah, Ruthie's not been crossing for a while either. You've never lived, Miguel, if you've never been pinched. <laughs> when I went to Greece, my ex-husband thought I was making it up, but everywhere I went, I got my bottom pinched. I'm going back when I was a heck of a lot younger, of course. But when you turn around, there was never anybody there. They must pinch and run, yeah. I haven't made much of a video, Melly, since, since I don't remember when. Not a proper video, anyway. I haven't made videos showing around here. I made a video showing the baby things I knitted, but that's about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah Ruthie's just not been in the mood, I think. I think the lockdown's got to everybody, hasn't it? It's amazing how many people are used to make videos and not making them at the minute. <laughs> Ankle biters, we call them, Gail. <laughs> Where is all my crochet? You mean my finished crochet? It's all packed up in the storage unit and I should get that back in about another week or so. 
my shed's arriving in, in, in the eight, no, eight or nine days. I started making YouTube videos because I got fed up with typing. Ruthie's full name, I don't know. Heinz, is it? Heinz? No, Melly, it's not going to be that big. It's just a a storage shed. It's not like Jill's. Jill's got a she shed where it's massive, yeah. Yeah, there's lots of male hookers down, John. You won't be on your own. <laughs> yeah, knitting, anything. Should have a hobby, John. What's your hobby? If you don't knit, you don't crochet. What's your hobby, John? Besides lifting a pint, what's your hobby? <laughs> Got a ring. Look, I've been engaged. <laughs> Everybody should have a hobby. What's your hobby, John? Yeah, I think knitting is better for men's clothing. Life is your hobby. In other words, you're in the pub. You need a hobby job besides boarding the pub. Woodworking, painting, anything. Jigsaws, anything. <laughs> Not just standing in the pub having a pint. No, you're not in the pub right now, I know, because you're home. But what do you do for a hobby? What do you do at the weekend? Well, that sounds all right. There you are, Miguel. New channel, Les Garçons. Two men that knit, they might inspire you to learn. When your shoulder's better, of course. Yeah, we keep our eyes on him, yeah. I, don't, I just can't understand when people don't have a hobby. I don't care what it is, whether you're making model, model planes, Lego, anything. But as long as you've got something that you do. Trev, I don't know. The last message I got from Trev was a little while ago. Said he was sorry he hadn't been on. Let me see if I can find him. I want to see Trev's messages and I can't find them. Messages. Trevor, here we go. Let 
Last message I got from Trevor was on the 6th of February. Very sorry, Jan, I've not been around. I'm so busy on my own channel. Which one? Uh, now it's up and running. Didn't know there was so much to have to do, Jan. Take care. I wish. Yeah, no Brandon. No Isaac, no. We need to find out what his channel is, if he's out making a channel. Trev, what's his? I'll say hi. Hi from the Saturday Gang. What is the name of your channel? And then we can follow you, yeah? Yeah. Everyone. Everyone says hi. How about that? What that do? Yeah, I've asked him. I've put hi from the Saturday gang. What is the name of your channel? Then we can all follow you. Everyone says hi. Yeah. Now, Trev is a friend who lives on the canal boat most of the time, uh, uh, a barge or whatever you want to call it, canal boat. Yeah. <laughs> yes, Heidi, you need to teach John a hobby. Yeah, he's got to have a hobby. You can't just sit there on his own. Staring into space, contemplating his navel. <laughs> You're right, Trev may not want us to, but, you know, I'll let him know. If he's busy with his channel, at least he should tell us. Yeah. Where he is, yeah. I live in Fleetwood now, Heidi. Um, Miguel's in Texas. Quite a few people. Yeah, he was warm, wet and no power the other day. <laughs> Politics a hobby? No, it's not, John. Politics is not a hobby. <laughs> Politics is something that drives you crazy. <laughs> That's what you call overthinking. I mean, your reading is a hobby. Do you read? Anybody who reads is still a hobby. Hi, Juanita, how are you doing? Whoever bought a, a drop spindle and wants to know how to dye yarn, Juanita is your lady. She spins. <laughs> yeah, politics and religion is something we don't really discuss on here because it only gets us into trouble. <laughs> What do we say? Race, religion, politics. <laughs> yeah, you're right there, Kazia. When Polly swallows a pallet. <laughs> yeah. No, we never speak about things like that. But, yeah, you can speak about them in your own private life, John. But, you know, when you speak about it on here, it causes too much upset. 
so we don't talk about it. Because everybody's got different views and different things. And I've been on other channels where they all start really ripping into it, you know, into it. Who's Juanita? She spins, is Juanita. She's holding a sleeping baby. She is a lady who can spin. She dyes your yarn. She does all sorts of things like that. And uh, so that's who Juanita is. Oh, yeah, everybody's got to do show the shed here. Yeah. I will show my shed. Yes, John, but even views and facts are different things, but we don't like either on here because either one of them just calls, causes problems. This is why I had to say no to everything. Because you always offend someone, yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, that's an offer we can't refuse, is it, Miguel? Miguel's taking us all to bed. He, man. <laughs> I haven't watched anybody, to be quite honest, Kaz. I have been a world's worst at, at, at you know, watching videos lately. Really, I have. I've been so remiss. I used to watch them on my TV. But this TV, I don't have the app thing that picks up YouTube anymore. Yeah. A burnt, I thought you said a burnt cake. <laughs> I thought you said a burnt cake, Juanita. Yeah, John needs a hobby. Apparently he's got one arguing about politics, but we don't want to know that. <laughs> This chair is the most uncomfortable chair in the world. It's got a cushion on it, but it still hurts me. It cuts into the back of my knees. I need a new chair. You know, because I'm so dainty and so lightweight, you see, I flatten all the cushions on my chairs. So when they start off being nice and cushy, they finish up being like that. Flat as a pancake. You grew up on a farm, but I take it you're not a farmer now, John. One of the chairs from the garage. I can't sit in the um, recliner, they're too low. Too low for my desk, yeah. <laughs> My room mirror and lights are probably somewhere in storage, somewhere. This chair, Kate, is absolutely flat as a pancake and very uncomfortable. And I've bought um, various types of cushions for it. I've got one behind me. This was supposed to be the be-all and the end-all of cushions. As you can see, it's shaped for your bottom and everything. Doesn't work. That hole at the back is supposed to stop your spine. But when I sit on it, it just goes down to about half inch because I'm so heavy. <laughs> so then I'm sitting on another one. Oh, I've given away two or three cushions. Oops, I'll sit on this one for a bit and see whether that helps. Then I bought this cushion, which is like a honeycomb effect. Like a honeycomb. 
and it's supposed to be the most comfortable thing ever. No, I sit on it and flatten it. You can hear ticking or behave yourself, Miguel. Change your name to Shabiga. Yeah, it's just not. It was supposed to be, oh, yes, it's cushiony. It's this, it's most wonderful. But it's not. It's even got a little. So you can carry it around with you. Why you want to carry it around with you, I don't know. <laughs> You like making sow games? What's one of those, John? Sow games. Don't know what it is. It's this cushion. Maybe if I sit on two cushions, maybe that would work. Now you can hear it because it's quiet, yeah. Oh, ropes that are twisted. Oh, that sounds interesting. You never thought of like amigurumi, not amigurumi, what's it called? Oh, macrame. You never thought of doing macrame, John? That's like twisted ropes and things. Let's put the two cushions on. See whether it's comfy with two cushions on. Well, at least it's not flattening. Yes, yeah, Sue can do macrame. She did me a lovely, like a little wall hanging, if you remember. I don't know where it is, because since we moved, I can't find a damn thing. Sit on bricks. No, I don't want to sit on bricks. I want something comfy. What a nice, comfy chair. That when I sit in it, it goes, ah. Well, it's a bit better now I'm sat on two cushions, actually. It's not flattened down as much. <sighs> oh, the comfy chair. No, it's a recliner. It goes right back. I don't think you can see it. It's behind me. Woo! That's my chair. Can you see it? that beige not the one at the background not the leather one that's not my chair that sofa belongs to my son and daughter in law i'm talking about this one behind me you could just about see it with the wooden arms that's my recliner now i've got a new one I've got a new recliner Oh, I'm hoping to find a new one. I want to be able to go and sit on one. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to be less than eight stone. Yeah. Don't forget I'm morbidly obese, according to my GP. <laughs> you know, you watch these programs like my 600 pound life and then I look at me and I think what are they what are they if I'm morbidly obese what are they because they're like three times the size of me you know and yet my doctor calls me morbidly obese yeah <laughs> that sounds a bit bad, Gary. You swung on it too hard, yeah. Yeah, you can make some really fancy ropes and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I'm just saying, I want to sit on a chair before I buy it. If I'm paying hundreds of pounds for a decent chair, I don't want to get it home and find it's not comfy. You know? I mean, they all look comfy in the pictures, don't they? But they don't have, like, my great weight sitting on it, do they? They all have somebody. Oh, there's an advert on here on the TV for um, rise and recliner chairs, and it's for scooters and something. 
And this woman's got the most long neck I've ever seen in the world. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it in the UK. She's got a really long neck. Yeah. Boxing Day toasty. All the Christmas dinner leftovers. You haven't still got all the Christmas Day leftovers, have you, Susan? <laughs> I hope they were in the freezer, if you did. <laughs> Why not make a salad? Get some eggs in there as well. Eggs and tuna and whatever, lettuce and stuff. Make a nice, some tomatoes, get a nice... Get a nice salad going here. Yeah. yeah, I was 11 stone, which is about what, 150, something like that, before I had my spinal operation and they told me that I was morbidly obese and it would affect my spinal operation. And I'm looking at these like 600 pound women thinking, hello. <laughs> now that is morbidly obese. That is what you call one big woman. I'm not that big. I think I'll go to America, I might be classed as being slim. <laughs> I mean, the, the stuff that they show us on, I mean, I'm sure it's not um, the way of the world in the US, but they always seem to show us massive, massive people, absolutely grossly overweight. And so they give us the impression, you know, in the UK, we get this impression that everybody in America is huge. And I know that probably not, it's just, the, you know, that's the way we're being sold it, isn't it? And we see all these fat people woggling about wearing shorts, you know. And you're like, mm, no. Or all these Walmart people. <laughs> I mean, we have some fat good people over here, don't get me wrong. And that is a word I'm using about myself. I'm not being anything. I'm fat. And I've said it before. I'm not obese. I'm not chubby. So why can't we not say that word anymore now? Oh, I know, they don't like our food, do they? But our food's not ladled with sugar, you see. Our food's not made with whatever it is, corn syrup or stuff. You know, I mean, they put oh, maple syrup on bacon. Uh, why does everything have to be sweet? It's no wonder there's some fat people. Sorry, fat people. <laughs> I haven't been to Asda in Norwich. Why are they that big in front? <laughs> uh, my dad used to say, don't stand there. It's like a total eclipse of the sun. <laughs> He wasn't very, uh... oh, the chocolate in America. No, sorry. Sorry, folks in America are really going to be controversial here, but your chocolate sucks. It's terrible. <laughs> oh, dear. I got sent some Hershey bars once and a Hershey chocolate kiss. Pile. Absolutely vile. You don't know what you're missing already with our chocolate. <laughs> yeah, my mum used to say that. And woe be tired if you stood in front of the fire. Oh, 
You know, when you were a kid and you came in, you were freezing. And you used to stand with your back against the fire, didn't you, warm at your bottom? And my dad used to say, you make a better door than a window. Oh, Hershey bars are absolutely vile. Tastes like cocoa powder, don't they? Yeah. No. No, I'm sorry, but I don't like chocolate. I mean, a friend of mine, she was in America and she saw these Mars bars or whatever, they were a Kit Kats or something. And she said they were horrible. She was definitely weren't like I was. <laughs> My mum used to call them corned beef legs. <clears throat> you know, you get mottled legs from sitting too close to the fire. My mum used to call them corned beef legs. Because you only got the fronts of your legs warm, your backs of your legs were freezing, weren't they? Was the Mona Lisa fat? No, she wasn't. She was just in that shape. It's like... Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe was a beautiful womanly figure. And yet today, by today's standard, she'd be quite fat. Because she was, what, size 16 or something? That's the UK 16. I don't want it as in America because you have all your sizes gauged different. Yeah. I mean, I know somebody in America who was like, they said they were size 2X. So I sent a 2X t-shirt from the UK and it wouldn't go anywhere near them. Yeah. Yeah, I've got to learn how to do fire lighting again when I get my log fire. <laughs> got to get, learn how to do the fire lighters, the little firewood and stuff. Yeah, I've got to be, I haven't done fire lighting since I was a kid. I used to do screws of paper all twisted up and then used to put oily firewood on top and then the logs on top. Well, not the logs, it was the coal in those days. We used to have like a gas poker fire lighter. <laughs> well, I'm looking forward to that, Chris. Be a nice perfume, won't it? Smelling like a smoke. <laughs> We've already got logs and logs and logs in the back garden. We've been saving already. But we need to buy it and build a log store because it rains too much here. We need to keep them dry. So, you reminded me I've not got any perfume. There you are, Pen Halligan's. Can you see it? Perfumiers to the Queen. Or is it Prince Philip? I'm not sure which. One of the two. Will you be able to see mine, Chris, when it gets done? Yeah, it was, this, I mean, I had to buy it. It was a sample box, but I had to buy it. You got these little files of, of the perfume from, um, I don't know what this one's called, I can't read it, but we'll have a see. Yeah, I'm getting a real love fire. She was really laying out her, didn't she? Oh, I do love Penhaligon. I do, I absolutely love their perfume. Very expensive. Very, very. I love expensive perfumes. I don't like light perfumes. I don't like heavy ones. No, I don't think you can have a, it'd be a fiery Senegal, yeah. Yeah, you have one. You have to have like a, we're getting a slate, 
you know, uh, what do you call it? Oh, let's have a look because it's. Oh, it's from Trevor. It's from Trevor. Ah. Hello, Jan. Yes, it's Kiss My Stained Glass. There you go. You got Trevor's. We have all got to go and see Trevor. I do live. Sorry, I've not been on because I'm a bit busy at the mo. Yeah. Kiss my stained glass. Everybody go and join. Join Trev's channel. Hmm. Yes. We have to do that. We have to do that, don't we? We all have to go and say hello to Trev. He does lives, he says. Oh. But whether there's any capitals in there. Could be capitals, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to have to have a look at that. Wow. Miguel, we're going to have to go and support him. You know, build his profile up or subscribe, won't we? Because you've got to have a good profile to raise yourself up in the status of YouTube. Yeah, you've got to have so many views and so many of this, otherwise you don't get anywhere. It's all to do with, um, there's so many channels with that name. Are you sure? Yeah, we've all got to go and support him. I'm sure you'll know it's Trev when you get there, which is the right one. I'm sure you'll know. Oh, that coffee is lovely and hot. I mean, obviously, I can't go and have a look now to show you which one is the right one, but I'm sure we'll find it. Yeah, I wonder what he's doing, whether he's doing the stained glass or what he's doing. I know he was doing acrylics, wasn't he, last time we spoke to him. Mmm, interesting. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, it probably would be him if he's lives, yeah. Your little channel's growing, is it, Dean? It's all good, good. If I'm not subscribed to it, it's not because I don't want to. It's because I've not been looking at videos lately. So. You can't find the right one. Yeah, you probably did, Dennis. Yeah, the Trev channel, yeah. I can't look for you, Miguel. Honestly, I can't because if I leave this to go and look, then I'll lose whatever. So, if anybody does find it, put the link, please. <laughs> I'll find the right one, put the link. We don't like unsolicited URLs, do we, Miguel? But we don't mind if anybody's putting them in and we know who it is. <laughs> We didn't like the people who used to come in and say, sub to my channel, and I'll sub to yours. We don't like those, do we? We don't like them. Well, just start one and don't publish it and see what you think, first of all, because you have a chance to make it and not make it public. Hi, Denise. Excuse me. You know, then you can see whether you like it. Or you can make it and just send it to a couple of people. People, your friends, and that's see what they think. 
if you want to do it. I'm supposed to be reading some. Oh, uh, is that his channel? I can't click on it. I'll have to try and click on it later, Leith. Although, surprisingly enough, when I get the live, when I go into a live, my own live, I can't... Um, uh, there's no things for me to read. You mean, we missed Trev's channel. Uh, Nathan's put a link, I think. He's only got three videos. Well, perhaps he's... No, it's not Shad. We're talking about Trevor here. His Trev channel, Shad hasn't got a channel, has he? Not as far as I'm aware. If Shad had a channel, it'll just be about fishing. Because he doesn't cry. I don't know, Ruth. I can't look. Um, I'll have to look later. Oh, he's doing diamond painting, is he? Right. I don't know that. I haven't really spoken to Trev since before I moved, actually. Yeah, Shad is a man, or he was a man last time I heard. <laughs> but you never know these days, do you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, the channel went about staying blast is a girl and Trev is about a guy. Oh, well, have you tried the link that uh, Nathan's just put up? Chris. Now, who's confusing Miguel again? I can't help you, Miguel. I can't look now at the moment while I'm on the live. So I can't look and I can't tell you. It's everybody else who's saying that when they put it all in, it comes up as a girl. <laughs> Trev is definitely not a girl. <laughs> I've spoken to him, he's definitely a man. Oh, he co-hosts with a woman. All oh, right, hey, help. All oh, right, he's very friendly. He's very friendly with lots of crafting people, so maybe that's what he's doing, a co-host. I would do a co-host if I could get anybody anywhere near <laughs> we can't co-host when we can't uh... he's a ladies man now that's news to Trev <laughs> he's definitely not a ladies man Miguel <laughs> he looked at the second one and said not anymore why was it that bad Ruth That doesn't sound like Trev. How can Trev do a live with me when I've never met him? I would love to one day meet him, but I don't think that will happen. Hi, Jane. Especially not with all the lockdown and everything. He did used to come up to Manchester sometimes, but now I don't live in Manchester. I've got no chance of ever seen Trev. Oh, split screen. Uh, it's trying to get older, Trev. It's like trying to knit fog in it. Trying to get older, Mr. Trev. <laughs> I do chat to him on the phone occasionally. A right arm. <laughs> he made some videos before, but all you could see was his hands. <laughs> so I have no idea what he looks like. <laughs> 
We have to guess. It's like Miguel, a man of mystery. There's one picture of Chris. It's like a little sideways view. So we don't know what Chris looks like, really. We don't know, know what Nathan looks like. That's fine. We don't know what Miguel looks like. Um, Miguel, I think he must be. All he does is show his arm when he's had an operation. Or I've seen his x-ray, so I've seen inside his body. <laughs> but that's about it, really. Lots of people are shy. You don't know what you look like. Oh, well, if you're confused. I've seen Nathan on pictures. I've met Ian. Um, I've seen Isaac on pictures. I've seen... Um, Isaac. Brandon, I've seen Brandon, because he did make videos years ago, yeah. Yeah, I've seen the inside of you on an x-ray, Miguel. <laughs> yeah. I'm not seeing Mr. Marsh now. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's what's inside that counts. But it's nice to put a face, isn't it, to the voice? Or a face to the type in, yeah? It's not like, you know, uh, Match.com or anything, you know? <laughs> We're not looking for partners. We just want to know what you look like. Yeah. If ever you've been on a dating website, anyway, the photographs they put up, women are quite um, truthful. Women put video uh, videos or faces up that are quite truthful. Men, no. They drag up some photograph from when they were at university. You know, forget to mention that they've now got no hair and they're twice the size that they were on the photo, yeah. Oh, boy. And the number of men I met that were separated. But they were separated by the width of the bed. That's how far they were separated, yeah. Lying lot of rags, yeah. They put old pictures up to try and entice a woman to have a date with them. But I mean, what, what woman expecting like a 30 odd year old hunk and, and instead they get a 50 year old bald guy with a paunch. Now, if you knew you were going to go and see a 50 year old bald guy with a paunch, that's fine. But when you're not expecting that, it's like, Oh, who are you? You know, and this creature comes towards you. Oh gosh. I was it was worse for me when I was actually married, Ruth. I got more hits when I was married than I did when I was divorced. I thought, oh, I'll have no problem with the dating game once my husband's out of the way. No problem, because all these men were like queuing up, you know, to have a date with me, which I never would when I was married. And then as soon as I got divorced, they all scattered to the wind. Except for my ex-husband's friends, who were like, you know, if you're going short, just give me a call, Jan, you know. No, I know your wife. Mr. Marsh is not in, is he? I haven't seen Mr. Marsh. Have you seen Mr. Marsh, Jane? Hmm. 
No, when I was married. I think men thought they were safe because if they were married and I was married, they thought they were safe because I wouldn't say anything because I was married. But once you get divorced, they get panicky because you think you might tell the wife. Uh, no, he's not here, Jane, not seeing him. Not yet, anyway. It's quite early for Mr. Marsh. <laughs> yeah. No, when I got divorced, it was just a different matter altogether. It was like starting all over again. That's when I started, after a while, after about 12 months or so, I... Um, Started thinking about one of the dating scene. Oh boy. Oh boy. Did I kiss a lot of frogs? Oh. No, that was dating sites. Forget it. I don't want to know. If they weren't ugly and they were married, and if they weren't either of those two, they were just looking for casual SEX, and that's all they wanted. Oh, it's amazing how many men. Their wife's probably gone off a bit or something like that, you know. Not spending too much time with the kids, yeah. So they want a bit of excitement on the side. You can always tell the married ones because they never give you a proper phone number. They only give you a works number or they give you a mobile. And then they start saying, well, I can't see you at the weekend or something like that. Well, I met a few weirdos on buses, but not dating material, Miguel. Definitely, I got the weirdos. You know. And now I gave up. I gave up years ago. Gave up even looking. I don't even want one now. And I said to somebody... I'm not looking for a man anymore. He said, oh, you're looking for a woman now? I went, no, I'm not looking for anybody. Man, woman, anything, no. <laughs> yeah, I can't be bothered. Too much trouble now. I'm settled in my ways. Sometimes I think it would be nice to have somebody who would take you for a meal every now and again but you don't get that do you, you get the complications whether you want to stay over you know what for and i don't want that anymore no i'll stay as i am thank you quite happy Unless he was a 90-year-old multimillionaire with no relatives. <laughs> Ooh. It's quite windy. No, it's not going windy, it's my son coming home. He's just parked on the gravel. <laughs> it's my son coming home from an evening of gritting. Yeah, definitely, definitely. How do I know they were weirdos? Because they were. You know they're a weirdo when they start talking to you. Yeah, done a bit of my sleeve, see. Done a bit of my sleeve. You'll hear the door in a minute. Go big bong, bing bong. him coming in if you hear it.
There you go. My son coming in. I told you it was him. Oh, it's upon the gravel. <laughs> How did they know they were weirdos? Well, you know, it was quite obvious when you started talking to them ago that they were weird. You know, when they come out with strange statements, you know? Or when they sit there with a bib and bag knotted in four corners on the head. They're weirdos. <laughs> That's the kind of man I attract. Yeah. Oh, I've had enough now, the cross right now. I don't want to cross her anymore. Oh, eh, start getting tired already now. Oh, get rid of you, know, the tis was in the cross with me. Weirdos, yeah. I don't mind men that are a little bit eccentric. I mean, I quite like Grace and Perry, you know, no, that's not eccentric, that would be. But, you know, I wouldn't want to date Jason, <laughs> Grace and Perry. People in England don't know who I'm talking about, but if you're in America, you won't know. He's an eccentric artist. He's married, he's got a daughter. But sometimes he wears a dress, yeah. <laughs> and yet he's not a transvestite, he just likes to wear a dress. So, but he's a very good artist. I probably won't sleep now because I've got all this Coca-Cola, all this Coca-Cola, all this coffee. Where did I say Coca-Cola? Tired, brain's going. Why do you want to turn your heating off, Kaz? I'd keep it on all night if it was me. But it's not, so I have to turn it down. I like being warm. I should have been born in a warmer climate. Oh, my dad had that. It's fun, isn't it, when they go off a while. Bits under my eyes. Yeah, my dad was in the past, he never, last year or so of his life, he was only, was way in the past. He was definitely not with us, yeah. Are you here? I think you're here, yeah. <laughs> my eyes are running. I've got a different mascara on, and I think it's... I think it's run into my eyes. <laughs> Miguel is always confused. Ruthie should be used to Miguel. <laughs> it's not quite like your dad, but you know. What did you miss? Um, Nothing much really, actually. Uh, I was just saying, I, 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 I don't like turning my heating off. I like it on. But I have to turn it off because they like it colder. Chris was confused. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? Can we fringe? It looks like somebody's chewed it. Oh, lockdown hairdos are wonderful, aren't they? I'm glad I didn't have a proper hairstyle before this lockdown started. I'm glad I only had it pinned up because it's gone really 
horrible my hair you can see he's got these bits broken off all these bits hanging off god i bet the hairdressers will be swamped No, in the UK, when everybody else is going, oh my God, it's so hot, I'm melting. And I'm out there going, yeah, bring it up, it's <laughs> warm. You know, 80 degrees, that's about right for me. <laughs> I like it hot. I'm very rarely too hot in the UK. Very, very rare. I'll say it's too hot. I don't like the sun on my head. That's the one thing I don't. I'm hoping that I brought my um, sun hats with me. If I didn't, then I'm going to have to buy someone. Because I can't do with the sun on my head. Makes me feel really sick and really giddy. My hair is so weedy. That's all I get, a little bum like that. And it's down here, my hair. How do I get to my toenails? I don't. I can't reach them. I have to go to a chiropodist. Yeah. My feet are always cold. I finish up with socks in bed. And I've always got these on. Because I can't do with any bit of me. These sleeves stop there. So from there to there is bare. And I can't abide it. I have to have it covered up. <laughs> Oh, I don't have a passport anymore. I have terrible trouble at the bank when they um, they want ID because I've got no ID whatsoever. How did you manage to have a haircut, Miguel, when it's all locked down? We can't have hairdos over here. People have not had hairdos properly for months, a year. Men are walking around with long hair down here. Men are going back to hippies. There's more men with ponytails now than there was in the 60s. Unless they've got a shaver and they shave it all off. Oh, you've got long hair again now, Chris. Ooh. The only little photograph I've got of you, it looks like you've got a crew cut. Well, how, how, oh, it's no wonder you've got COVID over there, Miguel. You've got hairdressers breathing in your face. I think I can get them cut by a chiropodist, but I can't get them cut at like a, a beauty salon place. You know, those are shut. You know, the manicures and pedicures are shut. But I think if it's a chiropodist, yeah, a chiropodist, whatever. Um, no, our restaurants have been shut for months. The pubs are shut. Nothing's open over here. Only essential shops are open. Supposedly they're the ones who sell food and stuff. But clothes shops, shoe shops, things like that are all closed, yeah. That's why more people have been shopping online, because you just can't go shopping anymore. All our non-essential shops are closed, cafes. You can't sit in a cafe over here. You you can get a drink from a cafe, but you've got to sit outside with it. Um, but you can't eat food in the restaurant inside. It's all takeaways now. You can order food from a restaurant, but it's, you've got to take it away, yeah. You're very unlikely you would ever see the Queen. <laughs> I saw the Queen once when I was about six years old. I've <laughs> never seen her since. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've bought two dresses since I've been here, but only because I was cold. Um, I couldn't find most of my clothes. So I bought two great big, thick, long T-shirt dresses, yeah. And no, I'm not saying they're all weirdos, John. I'm just saying that the ones I meet seem to be. <laughs> no, she's never at the palace, is she, these days? No, nothing's... No, I've not seen any royalty. I did see the Queen flying by in a car when I was about six years old, seven years old. But I've never actually been anywhere close to royalty apart from that. Yeah, I can't understand why some states are open. How are you going to lock it down this COVID if you don't shut down? Miguel, by the time you travel, the poor lady probably have passed away. Oh, she was really pretty, wasn't she, Lady Diana? You wouldn't get one these days. Nobody gets one these days, doesn't matter how high up you are. Because she's shielding herself, she's not. Um, you know, I mean, for her age, she's not looking bad, Chris. I mean, you think she's, what, 90 you now or something? By the time Miguel gets to England, she... She won't be around, I don't think, yeah. Yeah, I won't be getting a telegram from the Queen when I'm 100, if I get there. It might not even be Prince, but well, it won't be Prince Charles. Yeah, she's about 90, the Queen now. Prince Philip's 99. Yes, yeah, she was very pretty, Diana. Now, I think you have to buy things online, Ruth, these days, even your nappies and stuff. You know, your clothes and stuff, baby things all cordoned off, isn't it? Yeah, I wonder if she sends herself a car when she's 100. <laughs> yeah, when I'm 100, I don't think it'll even be baby Prince Charles because he's like the same age as me. Yeah, apparently Prince Charles was disappointed that Harry was a girl, wasn't a girl. She knew apparently when she was carrying him that he was a boy, but she asked everybody not to tell him. So he didn't know until Harry was born that he was a boy. Yeah, I think it'd be William will be sending me. If I get to 100 and I get my telegram, it'll be from William, I think. I doubt it'll be from Charlie Boy. As I said, he's my, he's my age, I think, or a bit, just slightly younger. Yeah. Well, you're a bit knackered then, aren't you, Ruth? Have you got a shop in the village or do you get all your stuff online? 
if they've cut all the buses. Here came William the Fair, oh my goodness. Well, it'll never be King Harry, will it? No, well, he's married to her. His son going upstairs with his supper. He didn't have any tea because he had to go out quite early, so he's probably having his tea now. Yeah, the third. There's been a couple of King Williams in the history in the past, I think. King Billy. <laughs> or King Willie. <laughs> At least even if our Queen's ancient... Um, She's not making decisions politically, is she? She did make a statement saying that, you know, the COVID injection didn't hurt. <laughs> you can only get 95 items once a month. I can't get her. How old was the Queen Mother? She was past 100, wasn't she? I know she had her hundredth birthday, she was over that when she died. I can't remember exactly what she was, but she was over a hundred. I never knew they limited you to 95 items once a month. Well, if I'd been on my own, I wouldn't have ordered that much, would I? But I never knew there were only 95 items, yeah. You would have thought they'd be glad of the trade. It's just getting the damn thing delivered that's a problem. You can't get a space. She was very, very... I mean, when you, you saw her, when she walked through all the rubble in the war, she wouldn't be evacuated. She visited people who'd been bombed out. She put herself in a lot of danger, the Queen Mum. Yeah. When you think she wasn't meant to be queen, I mean, it was the other one who abdicated, wasn't it? He was supposed to be the king. He was groomed to be the king. Yeah. I know the queen belongs to like the WI, don't she, the Women's Institute, where she, one of the castles that she goes to, she used to go every year and sit and have a cup of tea with them all and stuff. You know, she was the patron, whatever, patron of the WI. Queen Victoria crocheted, didn't she? There's pictures of her crocheting. She used to crochet things and give them to the, the poor of the... Um, of the parish used to get a knit it, a crochet things, yeah. Edward the Seventh, yeah, David. Yeah, Queen Victoria was one who crocheted, yeah. Don't know what she crocheted when she crocheted doilies. <laughs> Can't see her sitting there doing a cardigan, can you? <laughs> She probably did lace or something. That was what genteel ladies did. Edges, of, edges for pillowcases and edges for towels. I can remember when I was engaged thinking, oh, I'm going to get some pillowcase. I'm going to put crocheted edges on them. Who the heck did I think I was going to marry? It was the same with towels. I was going to put an edge in on towels, you know. Who did I think I was going to marry? Somebody with money. <laughs> I must have imagined marriage would be a completely different lifestyle to the one I was living. in. 
when I collected things from my bottom drawer when I was engaged, you know, some of the things I collected I never did use. I must have thought I was going to be like Mrs. Bouquet. <laughs> you have these sort of fantasies about what it's going to be like when you marry and then when you get married it's nothing like that at all. He could have been Miguel, I'm not sure. I know he had to abdicate, didn't he? He was always known as the Prince of Wales, wasn't he? Yeah, I can't get the hang of this putting toppers on tea towels. No, no. Why would I want to do that? Why would I want to hang them up? <laughs> I can't understand these toppers on tea towels. Not a lot of faffing about that is. How can you hot wash them when they've got a top on them? Because they're all like gathered up at the top, aren't they? No, just give me an ordinary rectangular tea towel. I don't want a topper stuck on the top of it. We used to sew a little loop on them, you know, out of cotton tape. How's my coffee? It's still hot. Still hot. And here we go on there. All gone now. We used to, like I say, so tape loops on them. My mum had one of them stick on hooks at the side of the oven. We used to just hook the tea towel on there. You can imagine me with towels with lace edges on. I've got a set actually that I bought in peach colour. I must have thought I was mm, hers and graces. Yeah, crochet list. My aunt used to crochet around Irish linen handkerchiefs. You know, do the crochet edging. Some people tat, don't they, around the edges. I did tattoo once, I learned how to do it, but oh my God, so slow. Yeah, but how can you dry dishes when it's all gathered up into a topper? How can you dry a dish? You need it to be rectangular to dry your dishes when you can't have a topper that's shunting it up into a little mess. Oh, give me a tea towel like a peg on the line. I've still got some doily somewhere that made for me when I got married. It was um, a lady that came in the shop. She made me a set when I got married. It was beautiful. It worked. I've still got them somewhere. I know I brought them with me because I didn't give them away. I can't crochet doilies and things. I can't crochet anything, you know, without fine cotton and fine hooks. I can't. I can't do it. It's the same with tatin. It's too fine for me. I can't do it with my fingers. Yeah. But how do they wash properly when they're all gathered up into a topper? How can you dry up with them when one end of it's all gathered up? I 
just don't understand why people do it. So, Rosie wraps. Yeah, right. Oh, the tiny hook on tatting. Oh, God, grief. You need a magnifying glass to find that, don't you? That little hook on the end of a tatting thing. Tatting shop. No, my aunt used to get Irish linen hankies sent from Ireland by a friend. And she used to have little holes all along the edge and you put your teeny weeny hooks inside them. Do a little edging. And then she used to embroider a flower or something on them as well. God, but Irish linen's a fortune now. She always bought Irish linen tablecloths as well to embroider. She wouldn't buy foreign cotton. Oh, that rosy wrap. I could not stop laughing. I had hysterics. I don't know where it is, Miguel. I think I threw it out. Oh, just kicked my flask over. Luckily, it's empty. One of my aunts was a beautiful embroiderer. She used to do all that satin stitch and everything. I only ever got as far as like lazy daisies and things and chain stitch. I never did the you know the filming in the satin bits. I used to just go around mine in chain stitch. So they were never as nice. I like wool embroidery. I saw one once in an American magazine where people had done these pictures and things with this thick wool, thick wool embroidery. Really like 3D, it all stood out. It was really, really, really pretty. It wasn't like a flat embroidery with silks. It was, you know, almost three dimensional, yeah. Yeah, anti-macassas, they used to call those chair back covers. It was because men in the Victorian times used to wear macassar oil in their hair and it spoiled all the velvet on the, um, the back of chairs. So they used to put these covers on called anti-macassars. Kaz isn't in Ireland. Where, where do you think she is? No, it was Heidi and John that were in Ireland. Norfolk. I've been to the Norfolk Broads. I had a lovely holiday once on the, you know, those boats on the canals. Yeah. I always said I'd go back, but we never did. Now I believe it's very, very busy. She's not in Ireland, Miguel. She's in Norfolk. No, I think Miguel's confused. <laughs> As usual, Miguel's confused. Yep, and I'm getting tired now. I've done almost three hours, yeah. Yeah, almost three hours, two hours, 59 minutes and 47 seconds. <laughs> so I'm going to be going to bed, people. And uh, Miguel's always confused. Kaz, don't worry about it. <laughs> Bless his little cotton socks. He's always confused. Right, people, thank you very much for your company. I'm going to be going to bed now because it's midnight. Well, two minutes past. 
and I've done three hours, so I think I've done enough tonight now. So I'm going to take my pills. <laughs> my eyes are going baggy now, so it's time to go to bed. So I'll say goodbye to everybody. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everybody. And I shall see you all next week. Bye for now.